Hello, good morning. My, my name is Gerge, and uh, I will be talking about uh, cooking Eclipse plugins. I don't know if you heard my uh, um, a picture in, 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 uh, before the keynote, but did you bring cucumber with you? No one? Or at least uh, how many of you have cucumber installed on your laptops or computers? No one? Okay. Okay, at, at least uh, I will probably say something new today. Um, so first, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, a quick introduction, why are we building uh, an Eclipse plugin at Midron, and uh, how is this a success story for us? Um, then I will talk about uh, the ingredients that we use to, uh, to make sure that our plugins work uh, correctly and according to, to uh, uh, what we want them to do. And uh, at the end of the talk, I will also uh, provide a quick demonstration of uh, what we do in terms of uh, testing. Um, so about me, I, I've worked in the past 10 years mostly in the mobile space. Uh, I started when we were still laughing about uh, phones being smart, <laughs> and look where we are now. Um, I did a lot of platform development, first at Siemens and, and then uh, other companies uh, um, importing Android, for example, to new hardware. And uh, of course, app development, a lot of platforms and uh, we do cross-platform app development at, at our consulting business and uh, started Midgeron as a spin-off last year. Um, I also uh, worked in embedded Linux and, and some excursions to enterprise applications. Uh, but what's most important, I'm a loyal Eclipse user since 2002 and I plan to continue being uh, an Eclipse user in the future as well. So. When we started to build our product Midgeron, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, um, uh, uh, really uh, the first thing that, okay, we need uh, an Eclipse ID support for that. And what is Midgeron? With, uh, uh, with it, you can basically build iOS applications in Java. So if you're an Android or Java developer, you can take Midgeron and, and create uh, iOS apps with it. Uh, the ID is based on Eclipse. That's why we are here. And uh, it's also integrated with Xcode, so if you have more complex projects with uh, native code and, uh, and uh, UI designs built in, in the Xcode designer, you can do that as well quite easily. So, okay. Um, LibreOffice just crashed on me. One second, please. So good morning, my name is Gerke Kish. <laughs> no, uh, let's, let's skip the first part. So uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about the success story, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you any fairy tales. So there were problems, uh, we, we made mistakes, and what I will tell you is how we went from, from zero tests to, to automated acceptance tests uh, uh, in our plugin. So in the beginning, of course, when you start uh, a new venture, you usually build a, a prototype and you try to validate the business case for it based on that prototype. And when you do that, you, you, uh, you are not uh, uh, focusing on quality, to be honest. It's not, gr it's not a good thing, to that, uh, but that's the reality. We are focusing on, will it look cool in the, de in the demonstration and not uh, how will we maintain that later. So the, when later we started to doing real releases, even if these were internal uh, releases for a private testing phase, uh, first uh, we didn't have any automation for, for acceptance tests. All acceptance tests had to be done manually. And this resulted uh, in long QA cycles 
and stress mostly on my part because I was stressed that uh, uh, the developers are, are basically doing things that uh, computers should. So what we had at this point, we had of course unit tests, uh, those are standard, those were automated by the CI server, uh, but we didn't have uh, acceptance tests automated. And, and mostly in this talk, I will talk about acceptance, acceptance testing of, uh, of uh, Eclipse plugins. So what we needed is uh, automated acceptance tests and tests that were created by the development team because we think that uh, uh, it's a crucial thing to, to involve uh, the developers also in the, in, the, in the acceptance testing phase to make sure that uh, uh, basically they, they, they use uh, formally uh, what, what they built. Uh, so we uh, started using SVT bot. SVT bot uh, is, a, is an Eclipse project. Uh, uh, how many of you know SVT bot? Oh. Okay, so let's keep this. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for the one people or, or the one person who doesn't know <laughs> uh, SVT bot, uh, you can write UI tests uh, uh, with a beautiful Java, Java API. Um, it integrates great with uh, JUnit and Tyco. And uh, it's, uh, it also includes an, an integrated uh, test recorder uh, that uh, you can use to start building tests quickly. But uh, usually, um, um, in our experience, once you know the API, it's uh, much faster to, to build it by hand instead of the test recorder, because usually the output of the test recorder has to be um, customized anyways. So our UI tests are automated now, and we um, build them by the 100. Uh, but uh, the, the problem is that uh, when, when we start, uh, uh, tr when we try to, to uh, check that uh, these tests are actually doing what, what we want them to do, it's really hard because, because uh, they are written in Java, so uh, anybody who, who is not a developer or more precisely not a developer on that project has a really hard time uh, to understanding what exactly does uh, the test do and, uh, and uh, what, what, was the, what was the intent and how can we uh, um, match the test with the specification. So what we need is uh, decouple uh, uh, the test specification from the implementation of the actual test. And, and uh, what we need is that the test specification is human readable, that we can uh, read quickly, talk about, and even a non-technical person can, can uh, uh, understand it. Uh, or, yeah. And uh, we, we still want the developers to maintain these tests. So this is where Cucumber comes in. Cucumber is a, a BDD or Behavior Driven Development Framework. framework. Uh, you can write feature specifications in, in a simple language. It's uh, basically just a text file. And uh, uh, in order to make this, uh, this specification uh, executable, so autom uh, automated, uh, um, we are implementing each step of the specification in a programming language in a separate uh, file or in a separate module. And uh, the, the original version of Cucumber was built in Ruby, but ports are now available for uh, a lot of languages, including JVM languages like Java or Scala, or, um, and there is also JavaScript implementation, C++ implementation, Lua implementation. So, so you can basically uh, use it almost in almost any uh, major language. So, um, how many have used Cucumber? No one. Okay. Uh, so, how it works? Uh, this language of uh, Cucumber is is really simple. Each uh, each feature is described uh, in, in a separate file uh, as a set of scenarios. And each uh, scenario is a set of steps. 
Um, there are only a few keyword in, keywords in the language, and most of uh, most of it is is free form, so you can choose your own uh, wording. Um, to describe a scenario, uh, first you specify uh, prerequisites with uh, the given keyword. Uh, then you specify actions, well, what uh, somebody, usually the user of the system, uh, does. And then, with the then keyword, uh, we specify the, the results, the, the expected results of, the, of, of, the action, of those actions. And uh, actually, a Cucumber is, uh, is uh, very flexible, so it doesn't even enforce uh, the, the use of these uh, um, these keywords, you can you can mix them if you want, but uh, really you shouldn't because because uh, this way uh, you uh, your scenarios will will have the correct semantics. And uh, we are using the JVM versions, so each uh, for for each step we we write uh, an implementation or in. Cucumber terms a step definition, and uh, a step definition uh, is just a regular Java method uh, with a specific annotation uh, for, for the keyword. And uh, the annotation contains a regular expression, and cu the Cucumber runner uses uh, this uh, regular expression to match uh, a step definition to, to an actual step in, in the feature file. And uh, when we execute uh, the feature specification, then Cucumber just goes uh, one by one and executes uh, each step one after the other. It's uh, very important that, that uh, the Cucumber language is not, uh, um, is, is, is not designed to be a programming language. So there are no um, macros in it, no, uh, no um, uh, control sequences like if the nulls or anything like that. It's really just a description of how actions come or, or how uh, uh, scenario statements come one after the other. And for example, um, once in every, of, every few months or now maybe years comes up at the Cucumber list, so why doesn't Cucumber have macros? And, and uh, the developers have, have to explain it over and over that in the beginning there were macros in Cucumber, but uh, as, as it turned out it uh, didn't really work because uh, that uh, uh, turned uh, the Cucumber uh, feature files into um, some kind of program programming language or, or program source code, but uh, without the benefits of a, of a program. So it was not possible to debug. There were no uh, uh, real ID support to, to, to do that. And, and uh, on the other hand, when you write the step specifications or the step definitions, uh, you are using a real uh, programming language. So if you have some complexity that you have to uh, uh, manage, then you have to put those in, into the step specification or the definition. Since uh, uh, Cucumber files are just text, you can use any editor you want, but uh, we have a nice plugin for Eclipse. Uh, um, you can find it on GitHub. Uh, and uh, it's based on Xtext. And it was created by Sebastian Benz uh, of the Genario fame. And uh, it's, it's uh, really straightforward to use. Uh, I, I recommend it. Um, it's just a quick sidebar about Genario. So Cucumber is not the only uh, option to do BDD uh, in, with Java. Uh, Genario is, is also an alternative to Cucumber. Who, who, who uses it or who, who knows Genario? OK, some people. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a really nice uh, uh, system. You have a, a DSL for unit and integration tests and a DSL for, for acceptance tests. And these, this DSL for acceptance test is actually very, very similar to the Cucumber 
um, um, DSL or Cucumber language, so it's easy to to uh, move between the two systems. It's built on Xtand, and I recommend you to check it out. If you don't like Cucumber for some reason, you you should check out JNRIO because because it's also a great tool, and we used it in other projects successfully. So now we have two tools, SVT Bot and Cucumber, and uh, we are using them together. In order to do that, we had to create an SVT Bot runner for, for Cucumber um, so that uh, we can use the SVT Bot uh, uh, system from uh, Cucumber itself. We plan to upstream that uh, to Cucumber so it will become a Cucumber module. And, uh, of course, it can be executed from Eclipse with the standard JUnit uh, runner, and uh, it also works with uh, Maven and Tycho. So it's uh, really nice to use. And now, with, with these tools, we have uh, basically decoupled our acceptance tests. OK, well, the problem is that uh, when, when you are running uh, um, tests with SVT bot, I'm sure you also had this issue that, that uh, um, external input events by the user can, can basically cause tests to fail. So um, it's basically when, when, you, when SVT bot is working, you have to tuck your hands away and not touch the computer so, so the tests will, will work uh, correctly. One workaround is uh, to run tests in a VM without automatic uh, um, input capture enabled. So, so that and this way uh, you can continue working on, on on other things while the computer is working. The other issue that we faced is uh, is uh, test execution time. We are simulating a. Uh, uh, real use, user environment, uh, even if uh, SVT bot clicks much faster than a human does usually. Um, Eclipse is not faster, so we, we all know that it happens that we, we wait for, for operations to complete in Eclipse. And the, to be honest, uh, we are developing an Eclipse plugin and during development most of the, uh, in most of most cases, the plugin that you develop causes Eclipse to be to be slow, so so the uh, this this all adds up that uh, a full test suite run for for example for us takes uh, two or, or around two hours now, and and this is not this is not something that that uh, uh, you can a uh, developer can wait um, before continuing with the next next task, so. Instead of running a full test suite before commit, we, we, uh, the developer only uh, runs the affected features on, on his uh, machine and, and the full test suite is, is executed by the CI server. So uh, about Tycho, who, who has not uh, used Tycho or who, who, who uses it? Okay, so you all know it, it's great. Maven, plug, Maven and PDE co uh, combined, and, and uh, this way you can build uh, Eclipse plugins quite easily uh, with CI servers. So now we have our plugin ready, and, and uh, let Mr. Jenkins serve the results. Um, we, we use the Jenkins CI. Of course, I guess it would work with Hudson or anything else as well. Uh, we launch uh, the builds at Maven and uh, inspect the test results. There are Cucumber uh, uh, result, Cucumber plugins for Jenkins, so that you can inspect the test results quite nicely. And this uh, on this slide, you, you see actual test results from the Midran 0 0.12 release cycle. So as you can see, there there were builds where we didn't even get to the testing phase. Uh, there were builds where there were uh, a lot of failing tests and, and uh, here 
there were a lot of uh, new tests added. So um, I, I think that this is quite normal for for um, project in development. Okay, let's uh, look at it in action. Okay. Okay, so we have the regular lexib screen here, and this is a this is a, a really simple uh, uh, cucumber scenario. Um, and it's a it's not a very good uh, example how you should do cucumber uh, scenarios because it's uh, very verbose. But I just wanted to uh, show you a quick demo of how how uh, we can really. Um, execute complex uh, tasks uh, and, and uh, test the whole system. So this, uh, this scenario will create a, a new Midgeron application and run it on the simulator. So if I launch it, and I have the simulator already started, so if I launch it, it will just start uh, The, the Eclipse instance con controlled by SVT, but as usual. <coughs> create the Midgeron project. Um, in, at Midgeron, we use Gradle uh, for, for building, so it invokes uh, the Gradle build during project creation. And uh, now we wait a little bit for uh, for the workspace to build. Um, it's, uh, basically, we, we index the, uh, a lot of the Midgeron um, um, SDK during during the first build, and we are already starting the application. You didn't see that, but uh, we used the run as menu. It, it was just too quick to see. And for the first start is a bit slow because uh, we have to compile the whole uh, world, or basically the whole Java world, to native code to run on the on the iPhone. But of course, this goes incrementally in in subsequent builds. Okay, and we already display the Hello Midgeron, and we wait a little bit uh, in the test and. It will finish. Okay, and uh, here you can see that uh, the features um, appear from the from the Genario file the same way uh, as they would uh, with a with the normal JUnit tests. So so. Each uh, each uh, step in a scenario uh, looks like as if it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, its own JUnit test. Okay, basically uh, that was the demo, and uh, if we just go back. the presentation so um, this is the journey that uh, um, uh, I showed you uh, so far but uh, tests uh, are still created after the fact so we do the specification in, in our project management system and and uh, uh, the the features are still created uh, after uh, so the next step for us is to to migrate to uh, true BDD, so true uh, um, behavior-based development. So first we will 
create or specify the new features in, in Cucumber and then write the code and, and of course, the, the tests uh, uh, using the uh, Cucumber language. So thank you. If uh, you have any, any uh, questions, I, I'm happy to answer. I think it's similar, but uh, the truth is that, that I didn't use uh, fitness yet, so so I'm I'm I, I can't really compare them. I think that uh, fitness has uh, maybe is uh, like a table-based, uh, so so it's it's uh, it's a uh, in term in that those terms it's a bit different, um, and uh, it and uh, basically cucumber is really designed for that uh, that the developers can be involved. Uh, in, in the testing process. Yes? So, do you know, so uh, this test case, uh, if, the, if, if the page will, if the application will, will launch um, successfully? Yes. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, it, 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 the, the expectation was that, that it will launch successfully, yes. Yeah, the, the, the test would have failed. So basically, uh, uh, when when you when you create your your step definitions, in those step definitions that uh, uh, expect something, you can just use the standard JUnit assertions, for example, or throw an exception if uh, if uh, if what you expected didn't happen. So. Uh, if if uh, we, we test that uh, test uh, that the simulator was started and that uh, the application is running on on the simulator, if it doesn't run, on e if if it's not running, then we, we throw a, an exception and, and the test will fail like it would fail in in a in a JUnit test suite. Yes. Well, uh, as much as you can, <laughs> basically, because because uh, what uh, what I what my experience is that uh, that uh, uh, when when you are starting a new project, uh, you are always very resource bound. So so you have very uh, uh, constrained resources, and and you have to uh, um, try to to find uh, a way to do everything. So. Um, your question was about uh, uh, testing after the prototype phase or during the prototype phase. No, you said during the prototype phase you want to do a lot of testing. Yeah. You want to have time for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right now in the phase where you are, mm -hmm. how many developers are working on testing and how much is it compared to the development team? Mm -hmm. Well, um, all of our developers work on testing because uh, they they have to write the tests also for the for the features that that they write. But uh, I would say it's uh, it's about uh, uh, thirty per, thirty percent of, of their time to to do tests or to to create these test automations. And what what is uh, important that uh, that. Uh, um, Writing these tests uh, is not a one-off job, so you have to maintain them as well, because because and and uh, each time that you change your application and if the APIs change, the implementation changes, uh, or even in in the UI case, just you change how the UI looks, you have to adapt the test cases as well. So when you when you uh, plan for any change. Uh, in the in the effort estimation, you also have to uh, include the the, te the test adaptation time. Yes. Well, Cucumber. Uh, 
uh, in itself is very generic. So, so you can you can even use it for library code if you want. It's a, a, we are now using it for for end-to-end -end integration tests. So it's what what I was calling as acceptance tests uh, to to. Um, may, so, so the, this is what, when we simulate a user sitting be before a computer and, and trying to use the system. So this is what we are using it for currently, but you can use it for, for uh, other uh, um, types of projects as well. Um, well, it depends on how how you how you implement the the step definitions. So uh, yes, that that's true, and and it's and it, this is the same as as with the JUnit tests. So the, so if you if you change the API, um, we um, on for for which you have JUnit tests, you have to rewrite the, or change the JUnit tests as well. Yes, but but uh, it's also true that that each of the step definition is only focused on on on, uh, on one part, so on one window or one one uh, specific control on the screen. So if you just change that, that that uh, that won't uh, um, um, exponentially change everything else in the system. No more questions. Uh, then I, I have uh, one more thing to add that, that I didn't in, include in the slide. So is, is our, when we are uh, writing uh, um, such uh, UI tests, it's it's always a is a, a question: How gray is our black box, so to say? That uh, uh, of course the. Uh, the ideal way would be that it would be a black box test, and, and the test would only uh, uh, look at what uh, what uh, what the user would see. But uh, this is uh, not always the, or I would say it's never the optimal solution, because because uh, for example, um, uh, in most cases it's much faster to check uh, with an API call whether a project was created, for example. Or to to create a, um, a predefined state for a scenario, it's much faster to uh, uh, to use the the Eclipse API calls to build build up a, a workspace state instead of just uh, uh, executing basically the same uh, uh, button clicks as you would in a, in, in a scenario itself. So so. And this way, it's it's uh, it's really not black box testing, but gray box testing. It's uh, and it's always a balancing act uh, between what 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 we are really uh, uh, doing uh, with the UI API, so with with SVT bot, and what we are testing using the or, or using from the Eclipse API. So that that's something that that. Uh, uh, we are still trying to to get right, but it, it's an ongoing process in, a, in every project. So thank you very much for for your attention. <laughs>